very much on this Monday people. Today's speaker is Dr. Domantz Abagam, who will speak about the combinator of ballistic and analysis of Bitcoin attack. First, a disclaimer. I don't like Bitcoins. Because it's about money. And some people made money very easily. That's by doing nothing. That's by buying bitcoins. Ten years ago, somebody called, oh hi, welcome to this seminar again. I forgot to tell you that people who are not familiar with the rules, it's absolutely, everybody is welcome to come, uh, but uh, absolutely no cell phones, no smartphones. So, 10 years ago, uh, somebody called, uh, it's a Japanese, person called Satoshi Nakamoto, came up with a brilliant idea. No more credit cards, no more eBay, no more US Treasury. You don't need all this centralized thing. Everything can be done collectively by your, your computer and other people's computers, a whole network called the World Computer, a virtual computer with many computers linked to each other and they take care of itself. So they have the concept of transferring money or paying Amazon or anything else without credit cards, without eBay, without anything, just by paying by Bitcoins. So instead of a euro or a dollar, or any other currency, there was a brand new currency, a cyber currency called Bitcoin. Like all new things, it was open for speculation, and there was a Norwegian graduate student, I forgot his name, who bought one Bitcoin for 25 euros, or a few Bitcoins. And a few days later, a few years later, he bought a fancy apartment in downtown Oslo with cost of at least a million euros. So this is not a good thing if you can make such easy money so quickly. Another downside of Bitcoin is not good for the environment. It's the computers doing lots of work. So the whole idea is to make people work. It's called proof of work. You have to prove that you're honest by doing, by working. So it's a concept. I think due to Cynthia Dwork and many Naor proof. So this was, it came up in cryptography. The initial motivation of this approach was to avoid spam. If you want to send email, you have to first prove that you are honest. And you prove that you are honest by doing some computational completely hard work. There's a proof that you are honest and I can trust you and I can open the email and you are not just spamming me. The downfall that to do the computational work, you also have to burn energy. So it's not good for the environment. It's very energy consuming. And as more and more people will use this new currency, the Bitcoin, it's still uh, very widely used, but still uh, most people use the usual dollars, uh, it will spend lots of those for energy. So I'm not happy about this aspect. On the other hand, it's a good example of the proof of the power of experimental mathematics. By the way, I never knew about, the, I knew about Bitcoin, but I had no clue what it's all about. Because of this talk, I had to read a little bit, so now I know a little bit, and I try to explain a little bit about it. Anyway, it's due, the concept was in 2008, 10 years ago, by Santoshi, uh, his name, Nakamoto. And it's still a mystery where he or she, or they, lives for it. It's believed to be a pseudonym of somebody brilliant, but maybe it's a group of people and maybe it's a machine. Anyway. But before oh, 
Australian man collected what? his Dodge in Canada Motor. What? An Australian billionaire. Oh, oh. And his uh, I've heard a lot of various claims. But now I don't. There's a reason for the people being him. I don't know. He's going to be a man. Because he's talking. But sure. Okay. But I have to mention, this is joint work. And he had told me all, everything about it with a very brilliant mathematician who now works in finance, based in Hong Kong, called Evangelos Georgiadis. So, a few weeks ago, we posted a paper in my homepage at the archive, uh, and then I'm going to talk about this paper in this talk soon. But before that, some background. This is based on cryptography. Without cryptography, uh, this would not have been possible. So you have some keywords in cryptography. One way function, di digital signature, and uh, proof of work. So let me remind you how cryptography works. It's a great idea of public key pick public. So it's based at the background. It's a Bitcoin concept and it's also called blockchain. It's based on the blockchain approach and algorithm. It's the, so the background is public key, public key cryptography. So the idea is amazingly simple. And in hindsight, it's obvious. I think it's due to Merkel and Duffy and they got the Turing Award for this brilliant idea. For public key in general or for? for no, for this, for the concept of public key. Oh, okay. Then famously, the first, uh, the first uh, usable thing that is still used today widely is the famous RSA. After the best, Samir and Adelman. And Samir was my classmate in Canada School. Oh, South Africa. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And other man is also famous for later on doing the so-called DNA computer. And so far, did not succeed, but maybe it will succeed one day. But anyway, let me briefly remind you how public cryptography works. The public key means that you can tell everybody how to send you messages, but only you can open them. Only you can decipher it. So there's a one-way function that is easy to compute, but to decipher is not so easy. So a good analogy or a good metaphor is Bob, Alice, and Bob. Alice wants to get engaged to Bob. So Alice wants to send a Bob a diamond link. So they are far away. So Alice is here. And now in Australia and Bob is in front. So a naive way would be for Alice to send a box with a diamond link. But then anybody the, the, who will see it or the, the, the main man or the, the, the main person can open it and steal it. So it's not safe. So one solution is to that Alice will lock it and nail the key to Bob in a separate cover. But this is also not very safe because somebody else can get the key. So the trick is that Alice takes a padlock, locks it, and only she has a key. So she pulls the padlock here. And only she can open it. 
says, I just says, thank you, God. All you see can open it. Nobody has, as in the whole world, can open it. And she made it to Bob. But this is useless to Bob. Bob cannot open it. He doesn't have the key. And it's not safe to make the key. Somebody can steal the key. So, what Bob does, he also locks it. So now it's doubly locked. <laughs> so you have Alice, Alice's and Bob's padlock. Bob can open his padlock, of course, but he cannot open Alice's padlock. And he steps it back. So it takes a couple of days or weeks, doesn't matter, but eventually it comes. So now Alice gets this, gets back her ring with two padlocks. But she can open her own padlock. So Alice opens it and sends it back to Bob. And Bob now can open his own padlock. And he got the diamond ring and it's very safe and nobody can intercept it. So this is the idea of public key. It's amazingly simple. Of course, uh, to implement it, you need a one-way function. And RSA famously used the fact that as far as anybody knows, any fool can multiply two big numbers, but only very, very uh, smart people that don't exist yet can factorize it. So this is in the other examples. And the one that is used in the thing is so-called hash function. That are also one-way function. Anyway, so far for the background in public cryptography that made it possible. So in this very famous paper by Satoshi Nakamoto, it's really, uh, you can get it on the web, it's eight pages, it gives you all the ideas behind. And now it's used all the time and there are competi com competition. And also the nice thing about it, the blockchain approach is not only for money, it can be used for many other things and people try to use it for other things. For example, playing the lottery. Not that lottery is also money, but playing a fair lottery without having to buy a lottery ticket from New Jersey uh, State. You can just do it or go to a casino. You can just do it online uh, independently of this. So it's still money, but not sending money. It's just having a lottery. And the other more important applications uh, and people trying to think. So it's a very nice approach. So, at the second half of this very famous so-called white paper that anybody can download that started the whole multi-billion dollar industry of Bitcoin, he says, what is the probability? How safe it is? Nothing is safe in this world. Nothing is certain. The whole idea in life, you have to take some risk. So, Bitcoin is not completely safe. You run some risk of being ripped off. But life is full of dangers. So if the probability is less than 10 to the minus 10 that you won't get your money, then you can take a chance. Because life is so convenient. So he had a probabilistic analysis of what is the probability of a so-called double spend attack of a bad guy stealing your money with really a bad guy pretending to pay you. It's like analogous to writing a check, giving somebody and then canceling it and after it. So there is an option that if somebody is really malicious or dishonest, he, can, he or she can take it back. So it's called double spend attack. And this was very crude, but he used some approximations and he has some estimates for the probability of the attack by a dishonest party being successful. And he proved that it's exponentially small. But this was approximate 
and very crude. Yeah. It's exponentially small and what? Hey, hey, I'll I show you in a second. Yeah, thanks. It's a, yeah. So the details are fairly complicated. But the whole combinatorics, the whole framework, can be encapsulated. It's, it's isomorphic or equivalent to a very simple-minded game and much more pleasant, not money and not dishonest and not bad guys or good guys, but just two soccer teams playing. And that's the equivalent model that we used in this beautiful paper. So here are the scenarios. It's a soccer game, but with two phases. You have two teams, good, okay, not good or bad, okay. You have good players, good, oh, good. good guys. G, and then you have the, okay, I don't like the word guys. The good players, and the bad players. Bad, not morally bad, not that bad, they're, they're, they're not that good. So we assume in this idealized soccer game that the probability of having the next goal, probability that G will score the next goal is and and the is larger. So this is the assumption. The honest people are more likely to score the next goal than the dishonest. So let's call the probability that the bad guys will score the next goal Q. So the assumption is, or else nothing will work, if the number of good guys exceeds the number of bad guys in the cyber universe, there's no hope for Bitcoin to work. So the assumption is that most people are honest because they're interested in having this system. Uh, so uh, it's been set defeating uh, to have it. So, so this is one minus Q. So in other words, Q is less than one half. And what uh, Dr. Nakamoto, that does not exist, and probably is not a doctor, but is very smart, proved that uh, that's a, a just question. It's exponential in the following quantity. So the probability is roughly, but very roughly, uh, this. Well, I explain what n is later on. This is coming up, the n, sorry. Anyway, so we assume that they are independent. The probability of the next goal being scored is independent of any future goals or any uh, past goals. That's the first assumption. Maybe a little bit unrealistic. So there are two phases in this game. Phase one and phase two. So beforehand you decide you want to get some head start. So you decide on a number, positive integer, very positive, on an integer n. So this is the first decision. So there are two parameters in this so-called two-phase game. Q, the probability of any one goal being scored by the bad guys, and the probability 1 minus Q of the good guys, and Q is less than 1 half, and also N. So phase 1 depends on N. And I don't know. Play until team, the good guys, team G, scores N goals. So you decide on N beforehand. And after phase one, team 
to also score some goals. On average, less. Because since team, the, the good team is more likely to score than the bad team, on average, you uh, will have less. But it's possible that team two will score more. So, by then, after the score and goals, team two, team G, team B, sorry, scored and goals. It's possible, but very unlikely, that M is bigger than N. If M is bigger or equal to N, it's over. And it's declared that team B, the bad guys won. So faced if in the unlikely event that M is bigger or equal to N, then team B, the bad guys won immediately. There's no phase two. Because they already have more goals. Of course, if Q is much smaller than one half, it's extremely unlikely. Because if team G scored N goals, uh, and it's much more likely to score goals, uh, team M, uh, team B is usually on much less than N. Anyway, phase two is the catch-up. Team B, even if it's behind, if team, team B is behind, and that's the more likely scenario, keep, keep playing. And team B, the bad guys, trying to catch up. If, so they keep playing, the same probabilities, if team B catches up, eventually gets the same number of goals. It's a tie, tie this team. So it starts behind, but catches up, catches up, it won. But if eventually team B is, say, a million goals behind, we decide beforehand negative infinity, but you can practice a uh, B and minus a million, then team the good guys won. So the attack by the bad people, by the dishonest, is successful either in the unlikely event that team B scored more goals than N, but that's very unlikely, unless N is very small. And the other way, even though it started behind, it keeps playing, but eventually catches up. And Dr. Nakamoto did a very crude back of the envelope things, and he proved, he estimated rather, that this is roughly the asymptotics for the probability of success. So if Q is very, very small, if N is big enough, and this gets tiny. So that's where the exponential. The exponential decay, for example, if Q is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, 0 0.16, 0 0.16 to the power 20, it's pretty safe uh, if N is 20. But if Q is much larger, if Q is 0 0.4, you have to make N bigger. If Q is 0 0.49, you have to make N very, very big. If Q is 0 0.499999, you have to make N very big. Then. So, thanks to the paper I wrote with uh, George Yadis, everything can be made exact. But the formula already existed before. Somebody very smart in Israel, called Manny Rosenfeld, about four years ago, came up with the exact formula. So the original, white paper by Satoshi, it was only a rough estimate using Poisson uh, approximations, but it was not exact. So many of us felt in a very nice paper I recommend about four years ago, came up with an exact formula for this probability of success of a dishonest attack.
or equivalently the probability in this artificial soccer two-phase soccer game of team B winning either by after phase one or by catching up to phase two. So let me just reproduce many of those fields, a beautiful formula. First let me call it and then I briefly prove it because it has beautiful commentoids and if you face it in terms of soccer, it's even nicer. So COM due to Rosenfeld, COM zero. Let R sub n, so it depends on n, the number of coins that the good people first mint, or in the soccer analogy, the number of goals that team, the good team decides to score to make it safe before and Q is the probability B the probability in the above soccer two-phase soccer probability of the bad guy of team B winning have a nice closed form formula but not as closed form as one would wish and that's one of the contributions this is due to many of other it's not due to us it's a nice binomial coefficient sum. So, uh, here it is. Uh, yeah. 1 minus. Oops. So it's 1 minus. So it's pretty explicit. And that exact, unlike the original estimate by Satoshi Nakamoto. There is only an approximation that the exact formula for the probability of success. Of course, there are both some assumptions here. The assumption here that the probability Q is fixed and scoring a goal is independent of any previous goals. That's our assumption that may not be realistic. But with this model, here is a beautiful, a little bit complicated, but you can easily program it on the computer and get the exact and graph it the exact probability. Of course, you'd like to have the exact asymptotics. Oops, sorry. Uh, 1 minus q to the power m. So this is, and this is polynomials in q, and we call it the Rosenfeld polynomials. Yes, John? Is that m or mn in the bottom of the. Oh, sorry, my m's an m. That's, this is m. N plus M minus 1 over M, or over M times N? This is over M. Okay. Okay. Or oh, M minus 1. Okay. Yeah, so it's my N. Yeah, my N is an N. So you can program it and get the answer for any N and any Q. You can graph it and get the probability. And indeed, you can derive the asymptotics. And our approach will give the exact asymptotics. So this is an answer. You have an equal sign here. But I want to make a digression about the equal sign. I'm wearing my favorite t-shirt, and it says blah 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 equal. That's the part I always hate. So what if they mean to be equal? If you have that something is equal to something complicated, that something is hard to compute, is not very useful. So, the, not all equal signs are born equal. Some equals are better than others. So, our contribution was to get a much more efficient way to compile a table of these probabilities for very large n, for any Q. For example, if you want to get the first uh, 1,000 things, it's pretty, pretty heavy. But what's nice about it, what made uh, me like it so much, is that this is a binomial coefficient sum. And thanks to the celebrated 
Zyberger algorithm that is part of the with Zyberger algorithmic 